Hello and welcome to the SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're looking at Pivot within SQL Service, so the Pivot operator, both non-dynamic and dynamic. Well, first of all, what's a pivot table? Um, you may have used these within Excel or they're known as matrices in Power BI in the data world. Um, but put simply, we just use a SQL Server pivot operator to convert rows to columns, as you can see in those two images, where we just flip everything around. Now, there's three um, core ingredients for this recipe. We could talk about um, processing phases, spreading phases, aggregation phases, whatever, but I'll keep it simple. We need to create a base query for pivoting. We need to create a temporary result within a derived table or CTE. So in our case, we'll use derived tables, which is just a subquery nested within a from clause. And then we need to execute the pivot operator. So let's examine our core data here. Um, we basically just have products, data, categories and suppliers from the Northwind database. You can Google this and get this in GitHub and install it. But to show you what the base query sort of looks like, um, we're going to have categories. So these could be beverages and so on. And we're just counting up the product ID to give us the total products that we have available. We have a join because we need to use data from the categories and the products tables where we're simply joining on the category ID where C is the alias for categories and P is the alias for products. And then we can just group by the category name in alphabetical order. So again, if we actually go and examine what we're using, the tables, um, we have a product ID in the products table in the categories. We have a category name, which is what we're interested in. So we can connect these two tables up. And then later on, we'll actually introduce the company name to add a bit more depth to our pivot from the suppliers table and we can connect those through um, supplier IDs in the products and the suppliers table. So again, we've looked at our basic base query uh, and it's just select statements. We've got an aggregation, a join, and we're grouping it by the category name. So let's move on. Let's dissect a full pivot. Well, there's a few elements here, like I said. Um, we have our select star, select all from that base query and that's within a derived table, which is just a subquery nested in a from clause. And then we can introduce our pivot operator. So I'll go ahead and execute this while I explain it. And within the pivot, we're just essentially counting up those product ID because we now don't have that within the base table. We use for and we have the category name and we basically assign which category names we want within our parenthesis. So you, can, you don't have to necessarily choose all of these. Um, and that, that's pretty much how simple it is. We can then go and execute it. Now I'm gonna show you a way to generate a bit more depth. Once we have this established, we can just add in any other column. Now I have to add in a join, like I said, to get the company name because that's within our supplier's data. But it's, it's very simple to add depth by simply adding a new field. And this could have actually come from the same table. So you wouldn't have needed to, to create the join. But when we do this, you'll see this is going to be more akin to the pivot tables that you've looked at or maybe matrix tables in Power BI if you've not used pivot before. So there you go. We have the company name. And then again, we go through with the rows that we had previously had specified as columns and we can break down our data into more depth. So now we're going to look at how we can do this dynamically to save ourselves some effort. And apologies, I did have to reduce the text size slightly, but you can pause this. Um, execute this script um, or do whatever you like here. But yeah, just to fit it in, I had to had to go ahead and reduce the size. So the dynamic part, well, we need to declare two variables. One's gonna be the column names and one's going to be the dynamic pivot, which is actually just essentially going to be the pivot that we were using before. Um, and the column names, we need to perform a few steps and you can see these are just held within blank strings in the declaration phase because we're actually working through it as we logically move through this query. So we want to select the column names from quote name, which is just a way to have delimited text. So just think of this as using the category name and then we have a comma to separate those. And we're taking that from categories, so that's simple. But to remove the final column, comma, remember, because we will have one at the end, we can set the column names and we can use the left function and length to purely minus one and take off that very last comma. And you can see, I can actually run that print statement just to check to print column names. 
and this performs exactly as the column names that we had before previously are rows but we don't have to do any manual intervention or type out names. Now we have, we declared a dynamic pivot that was empty, so we're gonna populate that now. And that's actually just the base query that we had before. However, um, now we can say for category name within the pivot section in, now we don't have to list all of those category names from a previous query or other information. We just put that column names variable that we previously defined. And now we just execute it with this sp underscore execute statements um, SQL statement. And we have the dynamic pivot that we've defined throughout. And that's an inbuilt stored procedure that just helps us, again, execute that more automatically. So you've got to be careful with dynamic SQL. It can open you up to things like injection. But if used responsibly, it's a great way to save time. As usual, if you like this content, like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.